Hey! Welcome to Clicks and Quesadillas. This is Jason. Uh, I have a few topics to talk about today. One, Coliseum of Comics. Two, Batman the Animated Series Hero Click set. And three, the Avengers Infinity War movie. Um, so I went to Coliseum of Comics and did their Kessel Run event. I went to seven stores and um, I got myself a $60 gift card. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, but somebody's here that went to all nine and finished the Kessel Run event, got himself a $100 hey, gift card. And a sweet little medal. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's Let me right. Move to the glare. Um, hey, Jason, how's it going? Hey, Zach. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for inviting me again. Yeah, man. Um, wow, so, uh, 60 bucks. What'd you spend that on? Uh, I spent it on a pre order for the Batman, the oh, animated uh -huh. series Hero Click set. Which... Yeah, when you said that, I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Because, as we talked about before, that is one of my favorite animated series. Um, I have not spent my $100 yet. I'm actually saving it because I want to buy um, issues one through four of The Dark Knight, written by Frank Miller. I um, thought you were going to burn it, because you don't need I, That's true. Um, but this one I'm not going to burn. Normally I do burn all my material items. It's a minimalist thing. Um, but it, it's an expensive... One through four is going to cost me like almost $500 to get. Um, like, like original copies? Yes. Is that what yeah, yeah, yeah. The original, yeah. First run, um, they're all, um, that, uh, they're all, um, what's the word? Certified through um, the CCS, um, which is where they grade and value comic books. So they're all like 9.8 and higher. Um, but which is what I want because I want to have a nice shadow box and things like that. Yeah. But, so I'm saving um, but so that's nice, and I can also use my Coliseum of gift uh, gift cards as well. Oh right, the ten dollars. So mm -hmm. I have like six six of those. So that's sixty. Then I have a hundred dollars, hundred sixty, almost there. Because first issue costs two hundred and fifty dollars. Oof. So <laughs> that's a hit. Yeah. Um, but so that's really exciting. So um, tell me more about the uh, Batman animated pre-release set. Uh well. <clears throat> They're going to have a lot of uh, the, the Dini characters. It is warm out here. We're in Florida, if you didn't know, and it's, it's warm. It's summer. We're actually it's... in Disneyland right now, guys. <laughs> but they're going to have a bunch of characters from the, the cartoon. They're going to have Bullock? like... Huh? Bullock? Uh, I don't know. They need him. They're gonna they need have... him with a mustard stain on his shirt eating yeah. a sandwich. <laughs> they're also going to have um, like uh, Beyond. Batman Beyond characters. Oh, okay. Terry McGinnis. Uh, I, I don't really get it, but they're also going to have... Um, Batman Beyond Beyond. <laughs> uh, like Justice League characters, like Justice Friends characters, you know, like 80s cartoon. Oh, which, yeah. I mean, I feel it doesn't really make sense to include it in, like, that world. Well, okay. Hold on. Okay. okay. I can see it in... YouTube, uh, you let us know in the comments below what you guys think. I think it connects because you have Batman animated series, then you have uh, Batman Beyond animated series. The Justice Friends was also an animated series, so maybe it's running along that kind of arc of them all being animated series, loose as it is. I still think it's just a way for them to pump out pieces, maybe make the set more round, and. They can kind of loose. I think it's shabby, but I think they could kind of loosely tie it. Or it could be it's all super wrong. Um, so I just I don't want Super Friends characters when I get uh, my brick. Because you hate. Okay. <laughs> I'm just still excited about it. When I get when I get it, it comes out in August. I, I want you to help me like open the. Packs, oh yeah, I'd love to. So. That'd be good stuff. Good Jason stuff. hates Native Americans. That's why he doesn't like Justice <sighs> Friends. He's not. <laughs> Oh, is that uh, Apache Chief? Yeah. <laughs> Nick Chuck! And he would grow real tall. I like his character. They have, in the, they have a character for that, uh, representing that guy in the um, Young Justice cartoon. I like that guy. Oh, yeah, but he has like, this force field thing around yeah, him. Yeah, some kind of. That's big really guy exciting. Yeah. So, 
Um, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this, shall we? Infinity War. What? what? That was a I, really good movie. And I am super uh, critical of Marvel movies. I just saw it last week. What is today? Is today the 4th or 5th? June 4th or 5th yep. or something today like that? Today is the 4th. Okay. Um, but man, it was, uh, it, I think the pacing was was good. You know, I never felt uh, like I was bored throughout the movie. I never felt it dragged on. Um, I liked the character interactions. Uh, it, it wasn't comic book accurate, which we'll discuss in a little bit, but um, I think it was a general, uh, overall, it was a really solid film. I agree. I agree. Okay, it was good stuff. and that's it, guys. Thanks for... <laughs> See? <laughs> JK. Um, <laughs> there's our review. Um, but no, sorry, I really enjoyed it. I really, I liked the the role that Thor is playing in in these movies. I especially like um, the new, like the revamp of Thor, because if you guys remember, the first Thor and the second Thor were garbage. I don't care what anyone says, they were not, they were not fun movies. The first two movies. Yeah, the first yeah, two. But then number three came out, and that was, you know, you really started, you know, jokey joke, really took on character of his own, I liked it, and then it carried through into uh, Infinity War, especially when he met up with Star-Lord, that was, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed the banter between it, um, and also it was kind of, it was kind of nice. That was funny. Yeah, it was kind of nice because it was, uh, you know, a little sweetness on your palate before uh, the bitter ending of uh, the movie. But, um, Man, they took us for a turn right in the beginning, and all the Asgardians are dead. Yeah. This and crazy. Um, and and you guys spoiler can and you oh, guys no. can comment on this and let us know what you all think. Um, but from what I've read, not just from comic books, but online in different forums, is that those people are dead. Um, now they possibly could make a, a comeback, you know, in the second movie, a la Infinity Stones. You know, somehow they wrestled away from Thanos. Which be real? Have you guys seen them? It's impossible. They're not going to get him. He's too strong. Um, but yeah, so from what from what the theory is, is that they they're dead, dead, or the other people. Uh, not to say the people that were taken from the Infinity Stone, you know, when Thanos snapped his fingers, because there was also a side thought that they're actually trapped in the Infinity Stone. Same that. thing with Gamora and stuff like that, which is you know interesting idea. Mm -hmm. I'd prefer them to be actual dead because that would be more accurate to the comic. Um, because in the comic, everything that Thanos did is because he was in love with death. And now in the Marvel Universe, death is is uh, not only an idea or a state of being, it's actually uh, it's a character. The it's, goddess. Yeah, and it's a, it's a woman, and you know, guys do dumb things for girls. Am I right? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, so that would be kind of cool, you know, if it kept that. And so that was the whole purpose of Thanos, um, getting the Infinity Stones, was to wipe out half the universe to appease his love of death, not to balance the universe. But it was just still, it was a nice, even though it wasn't accurate, it was still a more, um, it, was, it was a good explanation that was palatable, I feel like, for the audience. Um, Something relatable. Yeah, because sometimes they have really weak storylines. He just did it because he was mad. But so at least there was kind of a motive that gave him, like a driving force behind it, which was interesting. Um, what about you, Jason? Anything really stand out? or? Uh, let's talk about Thor's eye. I think it should, mm. he shouldn't have it. Because you know that big star? Yeah. And I think the eye should be burned up and he, still, he shouldn't mm -hmm. have an eye anymore. Yeah. Um, that was really interesting um, about that. Um, it kind of shows the power level of Thor, um, which I've always, you know, I always thought he was really strong. Although the axe kills me because that is not his axe. Um, that's actually uh, that's actually an axe that he has in the Ultimates storyline. Um, but, oh, the look of it? Yeah, is the yeah but Stormbreaker, story. the name is actually Better Ray Bill's yeah. uh, hammer axe. But, um, so that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Um, 
that they did that. I mean, it looks good. Like, you know, it was appeasing. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is a cool Peter Dinklage um, video from Game of Thrones. Um, I'm not sure if you're um, old school Nintendo controller. Maybe she wants to join me. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. You never know. Um, but so Peter Dinklage character, you know, Peter Dinklage is a midget. So that kind of actually, like, I got a good laugh out of that. He's a midget in real life, but he was he was a giant midget, so that was funny. Um, yeah, but overall, it was a really solid movie. Um, the Black Order was in it. Um, that was interesting. Now, in the... Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but in the Infinity Wars, the Black Order isn't... Uh, isn't in the Infinity Wars at all. Oh, no. no. Yeah. <clears throat> now, they're, they're like a recent thing, mm-hmm. Black Order. Um, but they're they're pretty interesting characters. Um, do you want to comment on them at all? Or? Uh, I don't know a lot about the characters. I only know <clears throat> a very little bit because they were in the uh, Hero Click set like a year, a year and a half ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the... Guardians of the Galaxy set, not 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 related to the movie, right. but there was a Guardians of the Galaxy set that had uh, all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, two or three of them were super rares. One was a rare. No, two were a rare. Mm. Uh, the only uncommon was Ebony Ma, which. Uh, he was not like in the yeah, movie. Which is in very the odd, the hero yeah. clicks for him is sixty five points. Oh wow! All he really does is like the like outwit, sure. perplex, prop. That's for sixty five points. So I mean, but I guess if you have all three, does he have all three at once? Does he have like a light power to where he can? Uh, he can have all. Every time your opponent uses any of those powers, he gets an, a, a, a like a token on his card. Oh, and then it builds up. And then up. for that token. You can take the token away and use any one of those powers that you want. So oh. if your opponent opponents keep using those, he yeah. builds up. Uh, That's pretty interesting. Yeah. They all the Black Order in the Hero Clicks form. They all have a thing where like you kill them, and then you take damage. Sort mm. of like Mystics, okay. but not right. Quite. Because instead of for damage dealt, it's just death. It's um, it's you can still reduce it. But it's like uh, it can't be reduced below one, and it can it can mean more. I don't remember if it's uh, half the damage that he receives or something like that. Something like that. It mm. doesn't matter. It's, they they take damage. You take damage if you kill them. Mm, mm-hmm. Well, um, the ebony uh, the ebony maw is actually a, a really powerful sorcerer. Which, which they show in the movie, which is also true to comic form. Um, he's so strong that he actually goes toe-to-toe with Doctor Strange. Um, and now, granted, Doctor Strange isn't as powerful as he once was, you know, with everything with the eye of Moto that changed hands. Um, and Ebony Maw also... At this point, is he not Sorcerer Supreme in the comics? Or? Um, no, he uh, he still is, but uh, the eye of Agamotto doesn't uh, fully trust him so it doesn't fully vest so it still retains some power in case it feels like it ever needs to leave him um, so it doesn't give him full access to it um, but then also the Ebony Maul use like subversion tactics and kind of snuck up on Doctor Strange um, but he was still strong enough to uh, like mentally beat him beat Doctor Strange down to where the Ebony Maul made Doctor Strange um, unleash Shumagorath which is an interdimensional, yeah, shout it, click the like button if you know Shumagora, which is a, an eye with a lot of tentacles, and he's an interdimensional uh, deity, I believe? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah. And uh, he used to be in the Savage Land, like they used to worship him, it's really interesting, you should uh, hmm. look up his Wikipedia page, really interesting character. So in the comics, Eye of Agamotto, not an Infinity Stone. Correct. Um, but still, so really cool. Um, and then uh, you had uh, Black Dwarf, which was the kind of the big hulking character. 
Um, he was pretty straightforward in the comics. There wasn't any. Uh, there wasn't that much story behind him. He was just your basic, you know, big bruiser guy. Um, he he did. He fought um, in Wakanda. He was sent to take them over. Um, he actually ran into a lot of difficulty because Wakanda was so technologically advanced, um, especially dealing with um, um, Dark Angels, which is like. Um, if you guys saw the Black Panther movie, it was all the women that were around um, T'Challa that had a shaved head. Um, those are all like his elite guards, and they all uh, are women, and they're all trained, you know, in uh, every form of martial arts, and some martial arts that are particular or an amalgamation, amalgamation of um, Wakanda fighting styles and like jujitsu. So you know, so they have like really unique styles of fighting that are uh, people haven't seen before. Um, so he was a pretty straightforward character. Then you had um, a Proxima... What, uh, dwarf, a, you said, is related? Black Dwarf. Uh, yeah, Black Dwarf. Uh, he is related to um, a pretty popular character in the movie, but I'm going to ruin his name, so I'm going to let Jason say it. Okay. Oh. Oh, well, I thought Kurt you Glenn. said it was Ebony Ma. Aren't they, like, no, brothers? No, no, no. It's, no. uh... Ke uh, gosh, it's a K. Corvus Glaive? Corvus Glaive and Black Dwarf are related. Oh, okay. Um, and they're brothers. Yes, and they're brothers, and they're kind of like yin and yang. So Corvus Glaive, um, he was a character that kind of looked like a... He was, like, a thin guy. He had, like, the, the double-headed spear, but he was the male. Um, he was the one that snuck up in Vision... Yes. In, uh, well, not Vision's room, but Shuri's area yeah, yeah. where she was trying to take the mm -hmm. gem off of. Okay. Um, and so, so they're uh, they're brothers, the the really big hulking guy and the uh, the smaller gentleman. Um, and Corvus Corvus Glaive, I remember. Corvus Corvus Glaive. Sorry, guys. Corvus Glaive um, is one day. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty bad with words. Um, he's actually like a, a master tactician. Um, not to say he's he's a really good fighter, but he's a really good studier. And so what he does is, like, before he invades planets, he studies all their history of warfare um, and all their all their great battles and different nations and things. And so then he devises his plans on all their weaknesses. He's a really good strategist as well. Um, but his so he he has you know, he's stronger than a human. So he's super superhuman strength, speed, agility, endurance. But he's not some you know, it's not like he can go toe to toe with the Hulk, like as far as strength goes and things like that. Um, but a really interesting um, factor about him is his spear, and the comics don't go into it. It's just laid out, hey, this is what it is. Um, he can regenerate, even if he's completely, completely incinerated, which is what happened in the comics, as long as his spear remains. He can regenerate through his spear. So he might show up in these uh, in the next movie because of that hmm. um, so that'd be kind of cool if they incorporated that Heroclix form has some kind of thing where he, oh, does he regenerates yeah so and it's solely so if you destroy the spear then you can kill him um, but uh, he's married in the comics to the female in the movie um, that her name is Proxima Midnight um, and she also had a spear um, but her spear can cut anything down to a, mo a molecular level, which is really interesting. But unlike Corvus Glenn... Glaive? Corvus Glaive, gosh dang it. Unlike Corvus Glaive, um, she is a master combatant, meaning she's almost like a taskmaster to where um, she is pretty much an expert in every, uh, every form of combat, not only on Earth, but throughout the entire universe. Um, so she's a really deadly character. So both of them together, even though they're not, you know, a Thor and Hulk, with his wits and her skills, they're a really formidable team. And that's why they complement each other so well. So, so you have the, the tank, which is Black Dwarf. Then you have, uh, you know, the, the really skilled fighter who would, you know, be more like an assassin, if you will. Um, and then you have uh, Corvus Glaive, yeah, yeah. Got it. Um, who, who uh, you know, is kind of the tactician who's, you know, making all the plans and formulating the attacks. And he can, you know, he can handle his own, but he's not as good as his wife as far as hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
Who's married again? Corvus Glaive. Corvus Glaive and Approxima Midnight, which was uh, the, the two people with, with the spin, staffs. Um, there's a fifth character in the Black Order. Her name is uh, Supergiant. Um, she's really just, she's just there. She can, she has like mind control, nothing really. That's why they, uh, she wasn't in the movie, I don't believe. She's not, uh, nothing, um, nothing fancy. Um, but an interesting, interesting fact about the movie, or about the, the Black Order, Well, it's still going. Interesting fact about the Black Order. We're running really, out. So. Really quick. Um, really, really interesting thing about the Black Order is that um, the, Ebony, the Ebony Mall um, actually betrays Thanos because um, uh, he's only looking out for himself. So he actually gets uh, Thanos trapped in this kind of uh, hmm. what Phantom it? Zone. Yeah, something like that. No, it's just it's like a big. Block. You remember in Jurassic Park, where the the guy has the the, the balls that you ride around on? No, no. no. Okay. You remember he has a little mosquito that's trapped in like the the crystal. Yeah, it's something yeah. like that. Um, he actually gets him trapped in there, um, and he does that to his own benefit because he wants to actually be the leader. Um, but so it's really cool. So maybe he might that might play out in the, the movie that he because he you know he, he maybe he'll backstab him and try to have the gauntlet on his own. Who knows? If he comes back to life. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I think it's a great movie. Um, it does not beat Winter Soldier, but it's uh, it's still really good. Probably definitely top three. I'm down. I'm down with that. Yeah. Yeah. Winter Soldier's still top of my list, oh, too. Oh, for sure. So, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to opening up the, uh, the detective sets. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it'll be good. August, August, I believe, All right. comes out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you want us to talk about something else uh, specific with the movies, if you have more questions, comment below, let us know. I mean, Zach has a good working knowledge, current working knowledge of mm -hmm. uh, comic books. I don't really. My, my knowledge Ooh. is, like, older, yeah. But uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Uh, <clears throat> see you next time.